1977, the American Academy of Pediatricians C. Henry Kemp, M.D., challenged fellow pediatricians to tackle child sexual abuse. At this time, most pediatricians were not properly trained on how to see and treat victims of child sexual abuse. In 1985, Kemp published a book about child sexual abuse titled The Common Secret, Sexual Abuse of Children and Adolescents. With this book, he raised public awareness and had schools implement programs to recognize children who have been abused sexually. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services estimates that nearly 80,000 American children were victims of sexual abuse in 2006. Based on retrospective studies of adults, it is estimated that only 1 in 20 cases is identified or reported to authorities. Familial support especially parental belief in the sexual abuse allegation and support can act as a strong buffer against the development of negative consequences for sexual abuse victims. Experiencing sexual abuse creates a feeling of powerlessness in the child and leaves the child with the perception of having little control over what happens. Girls are more likely to exhibit internalizing behavior such as depression and disordered eating, including anorexia, bulimia, or obesity. Externalizing behaviors such as delinquency and heavy drinking are more likely exhibited by boys. Post-traumatic stress disorder involves the persistent re-experience of the traumatic event by recurrent and intrusive recollections of the event. Numerous studies have linked major depression with sexual abuse. Both boys and girls who have been sexually abused are at an increased risk for the development of depression and this risk continues into adulthood. A history of sexual abuse places the individual at increased risk of suicide throughout the lifespan, including childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Cigarette smoking may be initiated during adolescence to help the individual cope with the trauma of the abuse and that continued adult smoking is complicated by nicotine addiction and adult stressors. Child sexual abuse can produce feelings of helplessness, chaos, and impermanence in children and adolescents, and Ill illicit drug use may serve as a way to escape or dissociate from these feelings. Adult alcohol use in adolescents is higher among teens who have been sexually abused. Adolescents in foster care frequently have histories of exposure to child sexual abuse. On average, youth with a history of sexual molestation or rape are also reported a significantly higher number of placements in foster group care. Participants were significantly more likely to have experienced physical abuse and or neglect compared to non-exposed youth. Transactional sex is the trading of sex for drugs for money. Both sexual molestation and rape with, were associated with increased likelihood of transactional sex. Children in foster care are two to four times more likely to engage in transactional sex compared to their general population peers. There are several socio-emotional factors in child sexual abuse investigations. Rapport building is an important factor. The development of rapport can help open communication with children in interviews. Uncommunicative children are more likely to open up to an interviewer after rapport building. There are three components of rapport building, emotional, cognitive, and visual. Open-ended rapport building helps disclose more information than direct rapport building, and field studies show that most often rapport building is unsatisfactory, with interviewers not taking the necessary effort to build rapport. Familiar interviewers, such as parents and non-official interviewers, seem also to have a positive effect on the child's reporting accuracy. Support can improve a child's resistance to misleading information and enhance memory performance. Results of this study have shown that less talkative children show, need longer rapport and fewer invitations. The more supportive comments are made, the more details are obtained. Even with less talkative children, shorter rapport building is associated with more information. Reluctant children can benefit from longer rapport building and second opportunities to establish rapport. Open style rapport building is more effective with less talkative children and short ses sessions of open rapport building have been shown to have richer information. Free recall is the most accurate form of collecting information. Older children can be in need of more support because they are more aware of the implications of what has happened and because they recognize social ex expectations and dynamics better. With younger children, shorter rapport building sessions better preserve a limited attention span. The last 25 years, the difficulty in evaluating and coordinating child sexual abuse cases and in meeting the needs of children has led to the growth of children's advocacy centers. CACs have attempted to streamline case management, minimize interviews, and protect the well-being of children by bringing together medical, legal, and child protective services workers to one site and providing specialized, coordinated evaluations in a child-friendly setting. 
The increasing use of CACs has led to an increase in felony prosecutions.